This is Dave Stanton for Carpet Tech. Operation and safety. Operation. The jointer can be set to any depth down to three millimeters. The pointer on the scale is to indicate the depth of cut. To adjust the depth of cut, loosen the lock knob on the front of the machine and turn the adjusting knob clockwise to lower the infeed table and counterclockwise to raise the infeed table until the infeed table is in the desired position, then re-tighten the lock knob. Avoid feeding work over the jointer against the grain. The result will be chipped and splintered edges. Feed with the grain to obtain a smooth edge. Jointing an edge. This is the most common use for the jointer. These cuts are made to square an edge of your workpiece. Set the guide fence square with the table. The depth of cut should be the minimum required. It is best to pass the concave edge of the workpiece over the jointer. Hold the best face of the workpiece firmly against the fence. Pressure should be applied downwards on the workpiece as it is passed over the infeed table and then your left hand should apply downward pressure on the workpiece towards the outfeed table after it is passed over the cutter head. Common sense should prevail as the workpiece continues over the jointer. Using push blocks or feather boards will help to maintain pressure in areas close to that cutter head. Flattening a board. When flattening a board it is best to use push blocks and assert pressure to the infeed table end of your workpiece until it is passed over the cutter head by at least 100 millimeters and then transfer the push block held by your left hand to the outfeed table end of your workpiece while still maintaining a lesser amount of pressure on the infeed side with the push block held in your right hand. Try to remove material diagonally opposed on the face you are flattening. This will come with experience, but the idea is to remove material from the front left or right depending on the twist of the board and maintain pressure on the workpiece where the freshly cut section of the board is contacting the outfeed table. You will notice that as the tailing end of the board approaches the cutter head, more material will be removed from the diagonally opposed side of the face. Maintain these reference surfaces as you repeat the process until the twist is totally removed. But remember, the workpiece will be thinner in those areas. Using a bandsaw or thickness planer to create a parallel face would be the next step in flattening the board. Getting started. Locate and ensure you are familiar with all of the machine's operations and controls. Check the path of the workpiece for clearance and obstructions when passing your workpiece over the machine. Before turning the jointer on, check for loose fasteners, fittings or hardware and be sure the dust port is connected to a dust extractor. Be sure that the blade guard is fitted and working correctly. In general, do not plane a workpiece thinner than 12mm. Do not plane a workpiece less than 19mm wide. Do not plane a workpiece shorter than 300 millimeters long. Do not exceed a maximum of 3 millimeter depth of cut on narrow boards and 0.5 of a millimeter on wider boards. Never plane a workpiece with loose knots or foreign objects embedded in it. Always wear safety goggles or safety glasses with side shields when using this machine. Wear close fitting protective clothing. If you have long hair, make sure that it's contained. Be aware of fine dust that may be created by the machine. Wearing a suitable dust mask is recommended. Some examples of hazardous dusts are dust generated from planing timber coated with lead-based paints, arsenic and chromium from some specially treated timber, and timber that may have crystalline silica embedded or dusted on the surface. Never perform the planing operation with the cutter guard removed. Support the workpiece adequately at all times during the operation. Stop the machine and recheck the Torx head screws and blades for tightness after 50 hours of operation. Keep the machine tables clean and free from things such as resin and gum that may restrict the workpiece from being fed over the machine at the correct feed rate. Never put your fingers under the cutter guard. 
When servicing, use only identical replacement parts. Use of any other parts may create a hazard or cause product damage. Never use the tool in an explosive atmosphere. Normal sparking of the motor could ignite the fumes. Do not operate the machine while under the influence of alcohol, drugs or any medication. Always stay alert. Do not allow familiarity gained from frequent use of the machine to cause a careless mistake. Stay alert and exercise control. Watch what you are doing and use common sense. Avoid distractions that will take your focus away from concentrating on the machining task. Prior to starting the machine, make sure the work area has ample lighting and no obstructions that will interfere with the safe use of the machine. Securely mount the machine to a workbench as described in the user's manual or the optional stand. Never leave the machine unattended while it's running. Following these simple rules should give you great repeat cutting in a safe manner.